Hi there. This is a short video focusing on a key aspect of the labour market. In another video, we looked at the marginal revenue product of labour. And in this session, we're just going to do some evaluation of that concept. The marginal revenue product of labour, or MRPL, is defined as the extra revenue generated when an additional worker is employed by a business. Now, the key thing really here is that we use MRPL in terms of deriving the demand curve for labour in competitive labour markets. It may help to explain um, significant and persistent differences in wages and earnings across occupations. This chart here shows the latest data on the best paid jobs in the UK. CEOs, senior officials, flight engineers, air traffic controllers, etc. right at the top there in terms of, of average annual salary before tax in 2016. So to what extent are those high salaries, those high earnings, a reflection of the marginal revenue product of the people employed by those businesses? How can we calculate MRPL? I've put here together five key valuation points which hint at significant problems with estimating accurately the marginal revenue product of labour. Firstly, and importantly, not every good or service actually has a market price attached to it. Think about, for example, the work of people in the care sector, or people in state education, or nurses in the NHS. There isn't necessarily a market price attached to the value of their work, and perhaps there shouldn't be. Secondly, it can be very difficult to accurately measure the labour efficiency and the productivity, the marginal product of extra workers. It's pretty easy to, to capture the value of labour productivity in, in the construction sector or people selling advertising space via a call centre. It's much, much harder, much trickier to measure accurately the productivity of people in education, healthcare and cleaning, as we've mentioned. So, first point. Not every uh, service, not every job has a market price. And secondly, it's uh, some, some, some occupations it's difficult to measure productivity. Third point, Col increasingly, of course, we live in a world where collaboration is the default. People working in teams. And in those kind of jobs, it's very hard to establish the productivity of the marginal worker. And a fourth related point is that in these days in the world of globalisation, Many products are the result of inputs that come from many, many different countries, multinationals and businesses located around the world, each of which contributes to the value added contained within a final product. Think about the Samsung Galaxy or think about the iPhone from Apple. They have component parts that may have come from more than, let's say, 200 manufacturers located in 60 countries. It's very hard to work out the marginal revenue product of each individual worker in those factories. And finally, some people can essentially bypass the market. Uh, the idea that businesses set the wage based on marginal revenue product may not be the case for people who have the ability to set their own pay. Uh, the self-employed, for example, or perhaps directors, senior executives in a business. So MRPL is an important idea, but it's quite hard and quite tricky to measure it accurately. Here's a recent example that uh, interested me. They, they've done a survey of the estimated hourly earnings of Uber drivers compared to taxi drivers in, in the US major cities. And the evidence seems to suggest that people who drive for Uber are earning more net earnings per hour. However, it's important uh, to note that the figures do not take into account the expenses incurred by Uber drivers. Uh, expenses that uh, taxi drivers would normally have paid for them by their employer. So things like petrol and diesel, insurance cover and other expenses are not reimbursed by Uber, whereas taxi drivers employed by a business normally have their costs covered by the employer. And uh, the evidence that I've found is that a full-time Uber driver uh, can expect an hourly expense of around $5 per hour to take into account. So there we go. There's some comments, some thoughts on how to evaluate the marginal product of labour. 